Hi guys, I'm Seymour Yang. I am the person behind uh, the brand Meerkatsu and I'm um, here to answer some questions. So, uh, excuse me as I read my from my iPad on the corner here what the question is. First question is, who got you into drawing? Um, I first started drawing pretty much uh, as soon as I could remember really. When I was a little kid, I always used to uh, pretty much spend all my time drawing, doodling, uh, even in class at school. Uh, I wouldn't really take much control over the lessons. I would just uh, spend my time drawing, so uh, not a really good academic. But um, hey, lots of practice uh, with drawing, so uh, it's always just something I've always done. And uh, being very... Uh, visible and vocal about it, people would always ask me to draw stuff for them, and uh, that's pretty much how it's developed to where I am right now, uh, creating uh, uh, designs and illustrations for uh, fightwear. Uh, next question: uh, Why did you choose to work in the uh, jiu-jitsu design industry? Uh, well, I didn't really choose to. Uh, create illustrations for the BJJ audience. It's simply that um, events conspired together and um, people noticed that I was illustrating my blog and website with drawings and word got out and um, I was asked to create designs and illustrations for Fightwear. So that's pretty much how it began and it's just a very very uh, I'm very fortunate to combine two of my great passions, uh, jiu-jitsu and art, together. And um, that's the way it's been for, oh, I say, probably a good seven, eight years. Uh, I've been training jiu-jitsu for uh, quite a long time since then, but it's only really the illustration part of it where uh, my apparel designs have got noticed. I would say it would have been about <clears throat> seven or eight years ago. I'd have to check my figures, but... Uh, that would pretty much how how long I've been noticed as Mikatsu the artist. Um, next question: What other artists influence your work? Um, well, to be honest, uh, the people that uh, influence my work. Um, I mean, these days uh, we live in such a a very a visual culture. And we have access to so many uh, forms of um, uh, visual media, um, from Instagram to Facebook, um, pretty much, you know, just basic browsing on the internet, and you're just bamboozled with uh, imagery, not just uh, illustrative and artistic work, but through advertising, packaging design, um, uh, graphics on movies, TV programs. I mean, these days, the modern audience, um, it's just uh, almost saturated with uh, very, very high, high quality imagery. So um, I guess like a lot of people who are um, artists, illustrators, who are creatives, you just absorb everything that you see, everything you come across, everything you read, every website you visit, all of it filters into your brain, gets mashed up together and somehow is regurgitated ideally in your own style, in your own voice, in a way that expresses who you are as a person. So in terms of specific people that influence me, I guess I could name you know, half a dozen tattoo artists, half a dozen graphic artists and illustrators. Um, and if you were to examine and compare my work to theirs, you may see small influences. Uh, but ultimately, I, you know, it's, 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 the things that I create, I try and uh, create uh, in as authentically personal way that I can. Um, but yeah, I'd say you know within within the field of people that really uh, or it's the style of art that I really like. Uh, I'm obviously influenced by some of the some of the better art, uh, tattoo artists out there and um, and graphic illustrators. Um, so. So that's that. Let's see what the next question is. My iPad keeps uh, timing out, so <clears throat> do bear with me 
as I open up the page again. Right, what makes you different? What makes me different? Um, pretty much as I've described uh, in my pre in the previous answer. Um, I mean, I don't think I'm, I'm the, the the artwork that I create is particularly um, special or. Um, you know, I don't particularly feel that the, the work I create is is any way uh, at a high level compared to some of the great concept artists that you see, the great fine artists, the great uh, modern artists that you see out there. I'm, I'm just the guy who doodles and have, have taken those visual ideas onto um, clothing form and apparel form. Um, but but one thing that I you know, I feel I can uh, genuinely you know, uh, um, vouch for is that the work that I do is is my own personal style, and um, the ideas that I generate um, haven't been influenced by all these various things that I see every day. Are my own ideas, and it, it, the way I express and communicate those ideas in visual form is is my personal stamp. So, what makes me different? is that when you hopefully when you see something of mine you go oh yeah that's a Mikatsu piece it's very distinctive very it looks like his kind of thing it's his line work it's hit the, the kind of visual puns that I use the symbolisms they, 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 there's a kind of commonality throughout all of these things that I create and um, whether they need to be better or not than another artist doing the same thing well you know it's it's like singers you're like one singer because of the, the tone of their voice and you're like another singer because they've got a very different style and a very different tone in their voice and it's quite possible to like them all and so you know it's a big world and hopefully I can f fit somewhere in in that field there okay on to the next question um, if you had to do it over again what would you do different? Uh, I presume you, you mean in terms of existing as as an illustrator and artist within the jiu-jitsu community well as I say I've been incredibly fortunate I've been offered uh, commissions and assignments and given opportunities at a time where I'd say seven or eight years ago where the the apparel and fightwear scene was was really only at the very beginning of of exploding into into what it is today and uh, and as as you as we all know, the the fight we're seeing, there are so many brands out there. It's it's a super saturated market, and everyone is trying to find a voice within that community too. You know, jujitsu is growing, but it's you know it's not growing exponentially. It's it's growing steadily and nicely throughout the world, and academies and clubs are are opening up everywhere. There's lots of new people joining. So in terms of servicing that community, the the brands that pop up, um, you know, they are they are they are numerous. So, um, what I would do differently? Well, I wouldn't do anything differently. I, I'd certainly, I don't think I could work any harder when when I first began. When I first started getting noticed, you know, I was pumping out hundreds of designs a year. Sometimes very small little designs for magazines, little cartoons here and there. Um, sometimes very very big projects, very big rash guard gi projects. You know, entire company brandings uh, I'd be involved in, and um, so I think when I first started, it was it was just at the very right time to to establish myself and get the Mikatsu brand name out there and build up a a following, the kind of following that I have now. If I were to start again at this very moment in time, I think it would be much 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 harder because there's so much more. Uh, great stuff out there, so much more competition if you like so many many illustrators, artists, designers are offering their wares and offering their uh, vision to the jiu-jitsu community and unless you have some sort of um, history uh, it's not like I've been going very long at all but uh, unless you have some sort of history it's very hard to get that voice heard to a, a very wide audience unless you have lots of money to pay for advertising sponsorship and all that side of the business um, so as I say I've been very fortunate I I got noticed if you like and I was able to express my my illustrative ideas at a quite early stage in the 
uh, in the re very recent fightwear industry history. So I wouldn't change anything at all, um, and I've been very lucky. Okay, on to the next question. Let's have a look what we have here. Turning the iPod again, on again. Um, what advice would you give to people starting out in design? Well, okay, I mean, I imagine you mean what advice for somebody wanting to start their own brand in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu community? Because in terms of advice, career advice for qualified graphic designers and illustrators, I'm not qualified to give that advice because, as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm self-taught. Um, I'm just a guy who spent all his child doodling and I've never really grown out of that. Only now I've progressed onto um, you know, drawing for uh, you know for commission and assignments so in terms of uh, professional advice I don't think I could give any advice to somebody who's already who already has plenty of career advice um, but in terms of starting up a brand I mean again <clears throat> right now it's it's a tough time because there are so many people doing the same thing and starting up their own brand and it's so easy to do you could literally just be one guy or girl with an idea, cobble together a few graphics, send it off to a supplier in Pakistan or China and they'll make a few samples for you and if you have a budget to make 20, 30 rash guards or maybe you know 50 geese, um, there are people out there who will make that for you, ship them over and if you're pretty good with social media you can sell them out you know, in a fairly short space of time and make a little bit of a profit and if you're clever, you'll invest that profit into the next products and the next product, and you'll build up uh, a marketing and sales strategy. And in a very traditional sense, that's how one would grow a business. It doesn't matter whether it's jujitsu clothing, but it could also be cakes or um, you know shoes or, or, or whatever. You know, that's the general advice. Um, but it is very hard because. Obviously, uh, there is a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of voices to be heard. And you kind of need to view things... I, th I guess if I were to give one piece of advice, is that you have to really have to take the long-term view. If you have a great idea for a product, a great idea for a design, a great idea for a brand, and you can pitch it well, you can sell it well, you can market it well, you can manufacture it well, you can reach out, and you're reaching a nice cash flow, uh, and you can build up your company then you've got to keep doing it, you've got to keep reinvesting and you've got to take it as a three year, five year, ten year um, uh, goal you've got to set yourself uh, I mean the irony of that is that the, me dishing out this advice is that I don't have any long term goals I'm simply, you know, I just move on from one drawing to the next uh, but then I'm kind of in this unusual position of having started you know, eight, nine years ago and building up uh, a following under the mere cat's name, uh, where well, you know, in terms of talking about somebody who's starting right at this very moment, uh, it's it's far harder to to reach, you know, a mass audience. So you need to take a much more long-term view about what kind of goals you have set yourself and what you want to expect in terms of profit making, um, turnover, uh, volume sales, um, distribution, wholesale, sponsorship. Uh, current and future designs you need, really need to take a long term business view and that's the same advice you would give to anyone else who is starting up a company <clears throat> what design of yours do you like the most um, it's quite a hard one really because when you get involved in a uh, an illustrative project um, Certainly, when I do, I'm I'm so focused in that <clears throat> in that one project that I'm kind of sick of it by the time I finished and I've signed it off and it goes to the clients or it goes to my brand. So, <laughs> so <clears throat> I mean, thankfully, there's 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 quite a long time lag between me completing a a, a piece of design and then me seeing it in the on the finished product. Um, I mean, even a T-shirt which is screen printed, you still have to wait a couple of weeks for the products to arrive. For rash guards, it could be a quite a few months. And for a gi, I mean, the average wait for a gi these days is a good six, seven months. 
for, for you to see your final products. So uh, that's handy because when you have that gap, you, you've forgotten about the, 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 the trials of creating this, whatever you've created, and you get to see the finished product, and it's almost like seeing it afresh again, and you get to appreciate it again. But um, to answer the question, I, I guess um, I'm, I'm kind of known for <clears throat> I'm kind of known for drawing my my uh, animals, and my thing, if you like, is drawing animals performing jiu-jitsu techniques. That's that's kind of like my little niche, my speciality, and I really enjoy doing that. And I'm, you know, you name the animal, you know, if, as long as they got four limbs, is it, uh, and even not. Uh, I take it as a personal challenge that I can make them do jiu-jitsu techniques. So from koalas to bears to tigers to rats to snakes, you know, I can draw them doing jiu-jitsu techniques. <clears throat> so that's my kind of the fun thing, if you like. Um, but, so as a consequence, I don't draw too many uh, projects featuring humans, actual people doing jiu-jitsu techniques. It's quite rare amongst my archive of... of designs. So in that respect, the first, I'd say the first serious project that I undertook which featured human type figures would be my series of uh, Geisha Girl versus Demon uh, submission uh, series. So the first one I drew was the gentle omoplata. So we had the uh, nice pretty uh, Japanese princess performing an omoplata on a, on a demon. Okay, and and then that was very successful. I did that for a charity, uh, and it's subsequently been revived for various other projects. And then I moved on to uh, a footlock, and the heavenly footlock was also done for charity as a T-shirt, which raised a lot of money for uh, sexual assault survivors. Uh, and again, that's uh, that's uh, an image that's been reused several times for other projects. Uh, and I've taken it on for. A good four or five different uh, pro other projects. So we've done. So I've already talked about the Omoplata. I've talked about the Footlock. Uh, the next project was the uh, the Heavenly Wristlock, which was a rash guard for my own brand. Uh, subsequent to that, uh, I did the Graceful Kimura. So again, um, a Japanese lady performing a Kimura on a on a you know in evil demon. And uh, I've also done bow and arrow chokes, and I'm trying to think what uh, the next one would be because uh, I'm kind of running out of techniques. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's a, there's been about five or four or five geisha girl versus demon um, <clears throat> uh, in in that series, and those are I'm most proud of because those are the ones I've spent probably more time than I would with say my other animal based projects. Because I've taken more time to study anatomy, uh, work out um, human positions. You know, I haven't traced anything. Um, I use a lot of photo references, but mainly so I can get details correct in terms of the geisha decorations, the kimono designs, and um, studying human position a lot. So, obviously, if I if I'm uh, a jiu-jitsu um, practitioner and I draw jiu-jitsu turning, I'm gonna want to make sure that. I'm going to look like an idiot if I don't draw it correctly. So, you know, I'll I'll do dozens and dozens of sketches just so I can get the anatomy correct. And I'll show some friends. I'll show my family to see. Oh, does this look all right? This looks a bit odd. So I agonise over a long period of time uh, with each of those drawings. But I think the results uh, are worth it. They're very successful products. I'm very proud of them, and um, they kind of epitomise the whole. Uh, 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 jiu-jitsu technique over strength and uh, good versus bad type of thing so um, as I say that, that's a theme that I'll continue to develop you know for as long as, as I can until I run out of techniques and I run out of ideas <clears throat> a couple more questions let's have a look um, what other artists uh, influence your work we'll kind of answer that question with what other artists influence I think you've just repeated that question again um, <clears throat> but just to expand on that idea of influence, um, I mean, there, there's a uh, you 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 can kind of there's this thing where it's very common right now to to take uh, a popular film, 
a popular brand, a popular piece of intellectual property, let's say Star Wars, or it could be another film, or anything else, or a cartoon, and Jiu Jitsu fight, um, because it's it's kind of kind of fun to do, and uh, I've done many, many, many of those. Um, you know, I've taken all sorts of themes from Barbie dolls to Starbucks to this and that, whatever. I've na I've taken any amount of <clears throat> familiar corporate or cultural and iconic um, figure or character, and I've done my own homage to it, uh, or artists homage and um, fan art if you like and those are very very popular um, and I do them really mainly just for fun really I, I don't really I've done a couple where I've done a few t-shirts out of them uh, and but I feel kind of a bit I feel like it's a bit like cheating you know I feel like a bit a bit someone's already done the hard work someone's already gone to great efforts to create this character of um, you know, Han Solo or Chewbacca or um, Bart Simpson or, or whatever. Somebody's done that, and all I'm doing is kind of riffing off the back of their success. And yeah, sure, there's a, a quite a bit of artistic uh, ability in terms of redrawing that to your own in your in your own imagination. But I always feel that's kind of cheating, so I don't want to do that too much. I still do it, but I just pump it out on Facebook as a I was like, hey, look, this isn't this funny. Um, but I'm trying to refrain from making them into T-shirts because it's, well, I, you know, I don't want to get in trouble, first of all, because some people have, some, some artists I, I known, I've known who have um, kind of trespassed on um, certain uh, brands or characters. And, you know, the people who own them, they've sent lawyers' letters to that person they've had to. So far, all it's... The, the furthest it's gone is just a cease and desist or a DCMA takedown notice um, and it's you know you don't really want to get in, involved in that if you're if you're trying to make a living as an artist because it can get a bit expensive so so in that respect I whenever I'm creating stuff for my own brand and for clients I, I try very hard to come up with original ideas uh, and those are reflected in my own style I'm not trying to copy too much, although you, I think it's okay to reference or have tiny little visual clues as to something that you might be referencing. But uh, I just wanted to make, um, I was just to make a statement on that kind of thing, this this sort of artist reference and um, parody, if you like. Okay.